right class so we are going to enter stage two of this and um, the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the colors that I'm using. So as you can see my paints are a mess. Um, I'm going to be using titanium white. Um, now this is Liquitex. I know you can't tell but it is. Um, mostly I use golden um, but you know different acrylic paints are going to be um, pretty compatible. This is also Liquitex. This is yellow oxide and this is the heavy body formula which is um, mostly what I use in the Liquitex. In golden I'll, uh, I use the heavy body and the fluids. Um, some ultramarine blue. Um, a very little bit of cadmium red. Um, good thing I don't need very much. Um, pyrrole is a good substitute if you don't have that. Um, I would strongly prefer to use alizarin crimson in this painting um, because that would be a little earthier, but instead I'm going to be using quinacridone magenta because I do not have any alizarin crimson. I do have something called permanent maroon, um, but I'm going to try to hold back from using pigments um, that were not part of my materials list, at least for now. Um, I'm also going to use thalo blue. And even though I just said I wasn't going to use paints that weren't in my materials list, um, a student was asking me about different tones of white. So I'm actually going to use a little bit of Titan Buff. And because this painting is so green toned, um, I have this kind of sad, sad detritus here. Um, but I think I can squeeze a little bit of Titan Green Pale out of this. Um, one difference with this one is um, this is the golden open formula as is my Titan buff. Um, one little tip when your paints look like this or even worse like this it helps to have um, something called a tube ringer um, which is just basically a little device that squeezes your paint um, towards the top. I have one somewhere. Sometimes they can be a little dangerous with old tubes of paint um, where they might split. Now in terms of my brushes, um, I just use cheap brushes um, probably because I am not the best at brush cleaning. Um, if I were to get more expensive brushes, I really like the synthetic mongoose ones for acrylic and oil painting. Um, but these are just some cheap nylon and tacklon brushes, um, but they're going to do the trick. Um, I also have this. Uh, my drawing students will recognize this. This is just a shish kebab skewer that I bought at Smart and Final. Um, sometimes I draw with these. Sometimes in drawing I'll use them for sighting. Um, sometimes I'll even use it as a straight edge. Um, but in this case I might use it to uh, manipulate my paint a little bit because Van Gogh's paintings um, do have um, a slight impasto textural quality. Um, sometimes that can be, you know, good to manipulate with something that you can scratch with. Okie dokie. So um, next, my palette. Um, this is just like an old tray that I have. Uh, it actually has the residue of some oil paint. Um, now, if I had a window scraper, I could probably attack this and peel a lot of this off. Um, it's always good to start with a clean surface when we're painting um, so that we're not distracted in our color mixing from other things. Um, sometimes it can help to um, actually have a slightly dirty palette when it's only the colors in your painting um, because as you might have noticed when you mix a color on your palette it looks a lot different on your painting but if your palette has the colors of your painting in it it can be a little easier to gauge so this however i'm going to get rid of and i just have my wax paper here so hopefully that does the trick and i'm going to double up so it has just a little bit more opacity. Um, maybe I will even uh, put some paper under it. Um, okay, so yes, 
so I'm just putting a little bit of paper under my wax paper so that you guys can see my color mixing better. All right, um, my first step, now that I'm sort of set up, is I'm gonna start and I'm gonna actually take some um, Titan Buff, which is just, you know, basically like an unbleached titanium. And um, sometimes I start my paintings just with Titan Buff. Um, I think that's actually gonna be something I'm going to do here because when I look at Van Gogh's paintings, um, I notice that the lighter tones are really uh, approaching the surface. So the um, underpainting, I'm gonna keep a little more low contrast. Um, now, actually, glad I can cover that up for you. Um, I'm going to start um, by creating kind of a grayed out green and the way that I'm going to do that is I have my Titan buff, I have a little bit of ultramarine blue, and I'm going to take some yellow oxide. Yellow ochre is a little bit different, but it can um, be a pretty good substitute. And I always like to have a little bit of red. Um, you know what? Maybe I will stick with magenta. I never like to just have a blue and yellow on my palette. I always like to have a triad um, of some type of uh, primary situation so that I can create some decent neutral tones. Okay. So um, I'm gonna start by mixing some of the colors that I see and what I'm gonna do is dip my brush in the water and I'll just like tap it off a couple times on the rim of my jar and then I'm going to take a little bit of my Titan Buff and my blue. And again, this is ultramarine blue. I'm actually gonna use a little bit of phthalo blue in this painting, um, but not yet. And I'm getting a nice mixture. I'm gonna push just a little bit more water into that. Um, I like my paint to be, you know, kind of like a creamy, consistency. Um, I can do that with medium, but in the earlier stages, I like my paint to have a little more opacity. So I will just use water for now. And um, when I'm painting, I kind of like to have like a little patch. Um, okay, so I'm going to have, you know, these type of colors um, to start off because I noticed that there's like a really green blue undertone in this painting. Um, but because in my underpainting, I need to start dealing with value a little bit. Um, I'm also going to mix a slightly darker version. And again, I'm getting this grayed out green with my ultramarine and my yellow oxide. Um, now, one of the things that's good about Ultramarine is that it grays out easily, but that's also what's not great about it, too. Um, now I have like a mid-tone, I have a darker tone, and then I'm going to put out just a little more of my Titan Buff. And I'm just going to leave that by itself. Okay. So I'm going to put this to the side. Uh, where you can't see it, um, but I'll pull it back over when I need to. Now, I like to start my paintings with um, a fairly broad brush. Now, normally I'll use a bigger one than what I have here, 
but because this is such a small painting and I did a fairly detailed drawing, I'm actually going to start um, with a flat that's not quite, not quite so small. Okay. And I'm still looking at Mr. Van Gogh here, but I'm going to switch back to my photo. And I'm just starting to work this in directionally. Um, now, those of you who've been in the classroom with me know that I like to do a lot of glazing. Um, I don't typically do a lot of paintings that are just wet on wet, but I'm going to be doing that more here. Uh, but just because you're working in a more like a la prima wet on wet style does not mean that you're not gonna do any layering. Um, so I'm actually switching to a round brush at this point and just gonna do some really fast shaping of the face. You might notice I'm going directionally. Um, one of the reasons why I don't typically do a ton of underpainting is just because, or what am I saying? One of the reasons why I don't usually do such a detailed underdrawing with graphite is because it will really kind of contaminate my paint. Um, but, you know, if we're working up something that's just to establish value, um, that's maybe not such a bad thing after all. Okay, I'm just gonna go really pretty quickly. Um, and you can see how I'm just shaping the face. At this stage, you know, sometimes the way that I think about it is almost like I'm sculpting the face out of clay. And I'm just thinking about how I'm gonna build that form. And I think that will become even more clear to you as we go. My paint is fairly watery, but it has a little bit of body. And I only have just a couple minutes here. So I'm getting pretty significant mixing from my graphite. I'm gonna try to use that to my advantage though. The graphite will dry inside the paint layer um, and really it's only gonna be contaminating things until this first layer sets up a little bit. about out of time. Um, so I'm going to continue on with this for just a few minutes and then I will start part three. Thanks guys.